Hi everyone, uh, Kyle Cordes here at Oasis Digital. Here's my contact information if you happen to need it. Now, the purported title of this video is Web Components for Angular Views, Part 1, The Pattern. So this video is apparently about using the, the smart view or uh, container presentation or whatever you want to call it, pattern for splitting out your view components in an Angular application. Uh, via web components. But that's not what it's really about. That's just the short title. What it's really about is this hypothesis of mine. I think the next generation of single page web app framework, so whatever, whatever comes after uh, React and Angular and Vue, like, you know, whatever the next big thing is, I think that that generation is going to uh, set aside the notion that each new framework reinvents the idea of a component a different way and instead I think that next generation is going to simply adopt web components for the component layer um, and uh, I, I think maybe you know maybe they'll all just make web components or maybe they won't even include components maybe that next generation whenever it comes whatever year that next generation happens maybe they'll just arrive and they won't even have a component layer because everyone will already have so many ways of building web components so to experiment with that today i'm just going to work with permutations on this angular view component pattern or on this uh, this view component pattern i'm going to do it in angular because although i'm familiar with a number of different technologies i'm the very most familiar with Angular. And uh, I'm going to experiment with how to split these components out from Angular and try to use web components for that view layer. Now in this first video, I'm just introducing the pattern. And so I'm going to bring up some code here and then talk about the pattern just a little bit. Now the pattern here is sometimes called the smart view pattern. Sometimes it's called the container presentation pattern. I've heard it called the smart dumb pattern. Um, there's a, a closely related pattern, but not exactly the same thing called the, the stateful versus stateless component pattern. Uh, I like all of those names. Uh, well, I like almost all of those names. I don't like the name smart dumb because that's kind of derisive and the view layer is super important. There's no reason to be derisive against the view layer by calling those dumb components. Now, uh, the one, the naming that we have chosen when we teach Angular Bootcamp, which you see linked here, the name we have chosen is Smart View. We chose that because those are both one syllable words and we have to say them hundreds of times while teaching. So there are many reasons to choose names and that's the reason we've chosen to use that name and that's what I'll use here. Let's take a look at this running application. So this is a very simple Angular application. It's actually adapted from an example that we teach in our Angular Bootcamp. So the, if you've been to that class and you're seeing this, this program might look a little bit familiar to you. But uh, let's see here. The way this program works is you just start typing. And as you type, it's doing a search. It's actually doing a server side search here. And then as I click on people, it's bringing up details about them. And then I could go in here and I could type in, uh, you know, partial, partial matches here and, and it'll do a search. Um, and now let's just explore briefly how this code works. By the way, if, if you're already bored because you already know Angular, I would encourage you to just stop watching right now and go on to the next video, whichever side it link ends up on. Um, the next video is well where I will substitute out components for web components, so it'll get interesting. But first, we just have to set some background for those who are not already deeply familiar with the Angular code. Okay, the app component here just has an employee list. So my overall component... Uh, Wrong window here, sorry guys. The overall component of the screen just contains this big thing, roughly where I'm drawing here, which is an employee list. Here, I'll make this nice and big. Um, the employee list is implemented here. Now the employee list, by the way, I have no idea why these are showing up as edited because I really don't think they are. Yeah, that was just VS Code misbehaving slightly. Here, uh, here's how I've implemented the employee list. Uh, this has maybe a little more functionality than it really needs to to illustrate the point. But what this thing is doing is, uh, oh, it implements, it uses RxJS and it fetches data. So it uses this employee loader service to fetch data from a, a JSON server. And uh, it does that in a way where, um, well, it uses a combined latest to get the data. The combined latest has some uh, has a, a, a debounce in it so that we don't requery a server too often. And then there's switch map. Switch map is the right default if you're loading data. If you're writing data, you probably shouldn't be using switch map, by the way, for those who haven't heard that yet. Um, 
And then when it comes back, we're sorting it. For this example, I chose to sort locally. So another little minor kind of tactical tip. If you're working in a modern platform, like say TypeScript with Angular, you, you really shouldn't be using just Lodash anymore. You should be using Lodash ES, and then you should be importing just the identifier you need. And this uh, can greatly cut down on how much code you ship. Uh, out of out of all of Lodash. There's an older way if you're stuck with uh, like older platforms where you have to use common JS modules. There's an older way where you can import, you know, Lodash slash, you know, something slash sort by. Uh, you don't have to do that. If you're working with uh, the, the full modern platform like Angular, you just use Lodash DS yes, instead of Lodash and just import the piece you want. Okay, so I think I've already told everything important here. Uh, this is This is kind of modern code, so I'm using the new way of importing RxJS, and uh, I won't bother to go over this because this is straightforward RxJS data flow. Uh, I have other videos where I talk about this uh, here on our Oasis Digital channel. Yeah, you can find lots of content about RxJS that goes over that. Um, the important thing is that this component that represents this, and ah, I keep going to the wrong place, sorry about that. This component that represents the whole screen, it really has two parts. It has this part on the left, then it has a part on the right, and then the part on the left includes these controls in this list. And what I've done here is I've split out this section here that I'm drawing, and I've split out this list as separate components. So I have split out a view component called an employee list table view, and a view component called an employee detail view. Um, well, let's see, the employee detail view, you just literally hand it an employee. The list view, you hand it the whole list, and you can tell it which one is selected, and it can tell you when someone makes a selection. Now, um, you might wonder, why does it have to tell me which one it selected, then I turn around and tell it which one it selected? Well, that's because uh, a view component shouldn't make any assumptions about owning any data. So this view component, although it might typically be used where, where it like it knows that it makes a selection, then the selection has been made. It's possible you'd use this in some more complex situation where uh, maybe you have multiple ways of selecting a single employee, and maybe you've, you're wiring together a complex data flow. The point is that a view component shouldn't do any logic and shouldn't have any state, so the view component, all it can do is it can show a list, it can highlight one who's selected, and it can tell us as the, as the user when another one has been selected. So all of the logic of this application is here, so that makes this a smart component or container component or application component or feature component. And then these two other components are just view components or I hate the word dumb components or presentational components. And now we'll take a quick look at these. The point about these is there's not much to see. So they each have a TypeScript file. Those TypeScript files contain no logic. Uh, the only actual data of import in the TypeScript file is that they do declare what the inputs are. And in this case, they declare two events and an output. Um, and we'll see as we look around at other ways of doing view components, other non-angular ways of doing components, that, that this bit of information could just be implied or it could be declared differently, that sort of thing. But I actually find this bit of syntax quite nice because although these are uh, just view components, they're fully robustly typed. So uh, although the, the topic of this, this short video series is different ways of doing your view components. As I look at this code, Angular is working great for these view components. It has great features for implementing view components. They're fully typed, and although you can just sort of, you know, hold your nose and, and disregard these nine lines, or maybe this, I guess this line here isn't really boilerplate, but you can disregard these eight lines of boilerplate and just pay attention to a couple of lines here. Um, and aside from that boilerplate, Angular is really doing a great job defining this view component. When I go in here, uh, oh, I, ha I have useful little features. And by the way, I don't know. <laughs> I have Svelte tooling in installed, and it doesn't realize that this HTML file doesn't belong to it, and so it shows me completely irrelevant warnings. Um, so totally disregard this irrelevant warning by a non-Angular piece of tooling I'm working with in my IDE here. Um, anyway, so Angular has this, uh, this uh, I guess, null coalescing operator. So if employee is null or undefined, you, you won't get an error that it tried to look up last name. It'll just leave it out. It does a great job. Um, over here in the list table view component, most of the same things apply. So again, uh, well, I guess in this case, because we're looping over a list, we know that it's defined, so I didn't bother to make these null coalescing, right? Although I certainly could have. 
Um, but here we have Angular's way of doing iteration. Now, is this the best syntax in the world? I don't know, but I'm very comfortable with it. I've used it for you know a thousand days now, and so uh, I can readily use this syntax, and it works great. I can catch any kind of event. I can then re-emit the event, and uh, you know, there's talk of maybe making it slightly more concise to re-emit this event, but it's already pretty concise. It's already one line of code, and I see it only goes to column 41, so that, that's not bad. Uh, with Angular, I can directly reach to a specific style property with this very you know, nice, thoughtfully designed syntax. Um, one slight bit of ugliness here is uh, I chose to make these anchor elements to so that they would sort of have that, uh, that, that behavior in the browser. Let me show you what that looks like. Because these are anchor elements, they look like links. And uh, that might not be the best way. I'm not sure if this is a great decision because this here, this little bit of syntax, this is a bit of an anachronism. That's something we used to do on the web 20 years ago uh, to make a link that doesn't actually do anything. So I, I'm not sure if this is really the best way to do this little bit of logic, but it's harmless in Angular. It doesn't seem to hurt anything. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, it's pretty straightforward to use this smart view pattern in Angular. Uh, this application is a pretty straightforward illustration of that. Let me bring up the, here we go. This is the repository if anyone wants to go take a look there. This is gonna serve as the basis to experimenting with different ways to implement these videos uh, or the, these, these view components in a, a short series of upcoming videos. So if you have not subscribed, I guess like every other YouTuber, I will beg and plead that you subscribe and everything so you don't miss that one. And uh, if you're watching this when there's more than one up, I'll try, to, I'll try to link them together, make it where you can easily just proceed to the next one. So thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you're interested in this stuff. And if not, thanks for watching anyway. Bye-bye.